Malawi's quest for a middle-income economy, as envisaged by the Malawi 2063 First Implementation Plan, prioritizes human capital development among the many pillars. For the country to have a globally competitive and highly motivated resource, Malawi aspires to enhance education and skills development, science, technology and innovation, among others. Against this background, the Malawi government, in collaboration with different donor partners, is implementing a number of projects that aim to address key priority issues identified by the 2020 to 2030 National Education Sector Investment Plan. The first episode of the documentary showcases infrastructure development taking place at the Likamunzu University of Health Sciences, KUHES, Lilongwe and Blanta campus, Malawi University of Science and Technology, MAST, University of Malawi, and the Malawi University of Business and Applied Sciences, MUBAS. The second episode showcases infrastructure development taking place at the Lilongwe University of Agriculture and Natural Resources, Luana, Mzuzu University, Mzuni, Domasi College of Education, and Nalikule College of Education. According to Secretary for Education, Chikonda Nomusa, low access for secondary graduates to higher education has been one of the challenges due to limited space, lack of open, distance, and e-learning programs, and low private sector engagement. Government, through the Ministry of Education, is implementing a number of infrastructure uh, projects in all the six uh, public universities in Malawi, as well as Domas College of Education and Nalikule College of Education. Um, this is to improve access, quality and governance uh, of higher education in this country. It is our wish that uh, students who qualify for university education should have the opportunity to be admitted into the system. A good number of these projects that we are implementing will lead to increased access and improved quality in higher education um, in Malawi. The Kamunzu University of Health Sciences, KUHES, is one of the institutions of higher learning that is embarking on infrastructure construction. This is an embodiment of the reforms that the university is taking since 2020, where it pledged to champion excellence in infrastructure development as an area of reform in order to expand access to quality higher education in the country. The Blanta campus of the university is erecting a three-story administration block which will be the headquarters of the university and house the corporate office. According to the KUHES Vice-Chancellor, Professor Mark Malewa, this is a timely intervention for a university that is currently operating without an administration office. In order to improve infrastructure and quality of education in higher institutions, the Malawi government, with funding from the World Bank, is currently rolling out a project dubbed Skills for a Vibrant Economy, SEV. Kuhes Blanta Campus is a beneficiary of this intervention and will see it benefit the construction of a multi-purpose teaching complex at the Blanta Campus for various schools, departments and programs. The complex will also house the Odell Center, Computer Lab and Dental School, including a private dental clinic. According to Professor Malewa, the Odell Center will enable KUHES to recruit students under open distance and e-learning, an area the KUHES has been lagging in since its inception as an autonomous university. Where we are now, the office of the Vice-Chancellor was essentially supposed to be a teaching space for anatomy. So all uh, the executive members of management, they are occupying space that should either be lecture halls, labs, 
and the teaching areas for students. So it's because of that that we felt having an administrative complex is one of the most important things that we need to do. At the Kuhes Lilonga campus, the SEV project is funding the construction of a complex that according to Professor Malewa, will feature artificial intelligence, AI facilities and video conferencing. Under the Public Sector Investment Program, PSIP, government is also constructing a skills lab at Kuhes Lilonga campus, which will enable students to be trained on dummies before they go and see real patients. To enable the Kuhes Lilonga campus to collaborate in various areas of academia with experts from abroad, the Chinese government is constructing a state-of-the-art Confucius Institute. All these new projects, according to Professor Malewa, coupled with the state-of-the-art hostels that the government has built at Kuhes Lilonga campus under the public-private partnership PPP arrangement, will enable Kuhes to double its intake and realize the quest to provide quality higher education in Malawi. Again, we're excited in that uh, the PPP arrangement for student accommodation, Kuhis is the first recipient of all public universities. It do alleviate our problems of student accommodation big time. And we believe that Kuhis accommodation cannot be taken out of the equation because our students, we expect them, some of them, to be in the hospitals in the middle of the night. And some of our students were talking about young girls. It's not fair to expect a young girl to get out of the hospital in the middle of the night to walk to Kirinde, Kawale. It's unsafe for them. That's why it's important that we have them resident. So the issue of accommodation is key for us. And this fracture, although it's only about 154 bed hostel, but it's a fantastic opportunity that the state-of-the-art modern hostels that will be managed and maintained well by professionals for the next 30 years. The Malawi University of Science and Technology, MAST, in Cholo is erecting a science lab complex where all laboratory facilities for biology, physics, chemistry, engineering, climate and earth sciences will be housed. According to MAST Vice Chancellor, Professor Adres Malata, the building will probably be the biggest lab complex in the country and sits well in a university of science and technology as it will attract scientists from outside Malawi who come and work at MAST. It's a multi-skills lab that has been funded and the total budget is close to 15 billion. In that lab complex we will be housing a reference lab so that means that all lab work for biology, physics, chemistry, um, and also engineering programs, our climate and earth science programs, everything that we do here at MAS to be housed in that building. It's the biggest lab complex in this nation, and so we're very grateful to Malawi government. MAS also decided to put up an industrial park. The industrial park is going to help us use the facility for value addition. There's going to be production that will be taking place in that industrial park. We also look at data science through drone technology and we're going to move them to the industrial park so that they can go into production of drones but also making sure that they teach other people how to fly drones. MAST has a ceramic studio. So we'll be moving our ceramic studio to industrial park because we want to make sure we're going to mass production. We want products on the market here in Malawi but also for export. The University of Malawi, UNIMA, has also prioritized infrastructure developments as direct input into access and quality of higher education as stipulated in the Malawi 2063 agenda. Currently, the university has a purpose-built chemistry lab that was built under the Higher Education, Science and Technology HEST project, which was funded by the African Development Bank. There is also a biology laboratories complex named Chimpamba, whose capacity is 200 students each at UNIMA. This is not all. These are new buildings that the University of Malawi has also constructed that house the School of Economics, Law and Public Administration. 
This state-of-the-art building has four lecture theatres that can accommodate 400 students at a go. Classrooms with state-of-the-art facilities and postgraduate classrooms with video conferencing facilities. <laughs> Professor Samson Sajidu is the Vice Chancellor of the University of Malawi and says the immediate impact of all these infrastructure projects is huge. Because then in 2017, student population in the University of Malawi, formerly Chancellor College, we were handling only about 6,000 students. But because of this infrastructure, we now have over 11,000 students. So there's quite a lot of impact in terms of uh, increasing, you know, uh, the teaching space. And under construction is a modern administration complex valued at 8.9 billion kwacha that, according to Professor Sajidu, will house more than 100 offices for administrators and teaching members of staff. This is a massive project that once completed in April 2024 will not only impact education in the country but also change the face of Zomba town. These skills for a vibrant economy project, SEV, funded by the World Bank is also constructing a state-of-the-art teaching complex at UNIMA. This, according to Professor Sajidu, signifies the massive support that the government is rendering to the university to enable it to realize the Malawi 2063 agenda. There is massive government support uh, in infrastructural development to ensure that uh, we increase access to higher education as we feed into the Malawi 2063 agenda. The Malawi University of Business and Applied Sciences, MUBAS, is a higher education institution that massively benefited from the public sector investment programs, PSIP, that the Malawi government is implementing with funding from the World Bank. The Africa Development Bank funded Higher Education Science and Technology, HEST project, also helped improve the infrastructure at MUBAS. It bankrolled the construction of the wet building and the imposing Order and Business Center building. Professor Nancy Jidera is the Vice Chancellor for the Malawi University of Business and Applied Sciences, MUBAS, and says these projects have provided classrooms that can take 200 students at a go, auditoriums and boardrooms, which have helped the university to increase access to the programs. You remember maybe that particular time, our student population um, was around maybe 2,000 or 3,000, the academic year. Right now we are talking of close to 8,000. These are just undergraduates. We couldn't have been able to get all these particular uh, students on board if it were not for this particular infrastructure. You know, so we have been able to increase uh, access, our figures, uh, and also we have been able to provide relevant education because through these particular programs we were able to do the stakeholders consultations, develop programs that are relevant, and so on and so forth. And uh, our programs, they are very, very relevant uh, because the, the involvement of the industry has been at the forefront. Um, in terms of these particular programs. The university is also a beneficiary institution of the Skills Development Project, SDP, funded by the World Bank. Through the project, a state-of-the-art school of engineering was constructed that houses geological engineering, mining engineering, and metallurgical and mineral processing engineering. The school has state-of-the-art equipment putting MUBAS at the center of Malawi 2063 through programs in engineering, mining, metallurgy, and mineral processing. Jack Chinzu is a mining technician at MUBAS, measuring in mineral processing, and says MUBAS has the capacity to process gold and help Malawi generate forex and help Malawi realize the industrialization drive. This smart furnace is the one that we use normally to smelt gold. So for us to smelt gold, gold has to be in the powder form. So we mix that gold with other reagents like borax. Then after mixing, then we put it in a furnace. After raising that furnace up to 100, 1,100 degrees Celsius, 
currently we are using it for our purposes only for academic for students projects but for industrial we need a bigger one which can help us to load more samples so that we can be able to to help the clients outside mobas the skills for a vibrant economy self project is also constructing a teaching and learning complex for the Malawi University of Business and Applied Sciences in Dilongwe to enable Mubas to expand its footprint into the capital city. We just would not have this one. This recorder aids us in recording the lecture. We are better placed now to serve the 12,000 students than we were 10 years ago. That library has the capacity of supporting uh, 5,000 students sitting at once.